Welcome to today's edition of the Leader to Leader podcast. I'm your host, Susan Spears, President and CEO of the Fredericksburg Regional Chamber. We have an awesome guest today, another Susan. With us is Susan Coleman, the Director of Marketing and Communications at Spotsylvania Regional Medical Center here in the Fredericksburg, Virginia region. Welcome, Susan. Hello, Susan. It's great to be with you this morning. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm delighted. So excited. We were just here um, for a few minutes before we started having a great chat about stuff in our community and leadership stuff. We just love it. Um, I know Susan well. She is a leadership coach, trainer, and speaker also through the John Maxwell program. Um, She has a varied background uh, with a VCU Bachelor of Science in Business Administration and Finance, and she's also gone to the UVA School of Bank Management, also a graduate of Leadership Fredericksburg, class of, I think, 2019? Woo, you got it right. (laughs) Yes, and along those lines, she's a networker. Yes, I am. Yeah, so we don't have a problem chatting. We don't, so you're in for a real (laughs) treat. (laughs) Yeah, I love it. I love it. So I've I've known you for a good while here in our community. Um, Really, uh, Spotsylvania Regional Medical Center is a great anchor um, here in the community, and you you guys do great things um, supporting our community. And working there in the communications and marketing there is, is I know, more than a full-time job. But before we hear some pieces of that, I'm sure it'll be woven into what you share. Let's hear a little bit for our listeners about your personal leadership journey. Yeah, so, um, you know, you just, looking back, that 2020 vision that you have, mm-hmm. I, I realized that at a very early age, I had some leadership qualities as we define them today. I have two older brothers, and so being the youngest and a girl, yeah. I had to learn quickly. So I stood up to them. I was bossing them around um, and just taking a stand and not really realizing what I was doing. So um, as boys will do, you know, they never really wanted to do their chores and they would always try to make me do their chores. Chores, And I stood up to them and I remember coming up with a schedule and little things like that. And I'm thinking, wow, that actually was taking leadership. Mm -hmm. Um, If you ask my family members, they would have said, yeah, very early on you did. But for me personally, I didn't acknowledge it or or really come out of my shell. I was very shy when I was younger in school. I didn't participate in events and activities. So it wasn't until my college years when I started to step out and start speaking and and taking leadership roles in organizations. And um, I guess that's when I started to bloom, if you will, Mm -hmm. um, coming into figuring out who I am. So those early years... Um, really didn't see myself as a leader at all, just kind of behind the scenes. I'd lift people up. I'd do the work behind the scenes, but I never wanted to be recognized or seen or, or put in charge for whatever reason. Yeah. Well, you seem to be more extroverted than introverted, and usually that's a lifetime trait. So how, how have you felt that shift and change over that time? Yeah. So I know all of us have taken some of those, uh-huh. uh, you know, personality and, and things. So I am actually right on the line of okay. extrovert and introvert. I see. So when I am um, out, I am very much engaging. I love to talk to people. Uh-huh. I, I, that gives me energy. I love speaking engagements. But at the end of the day, I really do need that time alone and, right. and to regroup and, and refuel. So I think that's the introvert part of it. Um, I will go into a room and introduce myself. I have no problem with that. Um, mm-hmm. But in the younger years, I didn't. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So so what changed there that made you take on more leadership roles, and what kind of things were you doing there in college? Yeah, so I just think that um, younger, uh, being the youngest, um, my parents divorced, and just that whole my mom was everything. Mm-hmm. She was our mm-hmm. shero. She raised us. Um, I was a lot protected, so I didn't really know how to do that well, like okay. engage well. I was, you know, went straight into first grade, did not go to kindergarten because my mom wanted to keep me home an extra year kind of thing. So <laughs> really had that. more protect- season. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, and, and, you know, having those two older brothers protecting you all the time. Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of that was, was it. Um, but then when going to college, you really don't have that. Right. You're on your own. You're on your own. Unless you're in college at home, but you, you weren't. No, no, I was not. And so then it was like, okay, this yeah. is a whole new world, and uh, yeah. I want to find it. 
And so I think that was just kind of the switch. It was, uh-huh. um, my mom's not here. Yeah. My brothers, one was in the service, one moved to Florida. You know, they're not here. So it was just I'm a just me. World. Yeah. It's a really different feeling, isn't it? It is. And it's wonderful. But yeah. it's still, it's a continuation, right? I don't think we ever really know all of me. Mm-hmm. Like, you find all of you. It's, it's a constant discovery as we continue on in this life. Yeah. And when you make, when you have those moments of change, you can decide if you're in touch with yourself. Yes. Like, like, okay, so I have this trait that um, is either really good or maybe not my best, my area of improvement. Yes. So I'm going to be around new people, and I, they don't know that I carried that with me. That's right. Right. So yes. I, I have this opportunity to be to to choose really exactly how I show up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And when you think of that, like how would, like jumping ahead to today, how would you describe your leadership style? Well, I am, of course, a networker, uh-huh. as, as you talk, highly collaborative, um, love engagement, um, inspirational. Uh, my faith is really strong, so I'm very passionate mm-hmm. about my work and my family, so I, I would say that. Um, Dependability is one of those leadership skills that's really important, so I try to be dependable for for others. Peaceful and confidential, and I don't think people talk about those so much, but I am a peace seeker. So um, when there is, you know, trouble, turmoil, problems to solve, I'm going to look for the solution because I need that peace in my life, and I bring it to the teams, the teams. So if we're having difficulty, we need to have those crucial conversations. Yes. I'm all about that. It's not that I like conflict. I don't. But in order for me to get through the conflict, I know that there's some things that I must do to get to that peace place so that we can yeah. be effective. That's a real interesting way to, to, you know, talk about it, to use the word peace around conflict. Yes. You know, and so, so many people, like, conflict is what can hold everything back. Like being passive aggressive, um, people who really dislike conflict the most. I think, to your point, everybody does, but yes. that hold it in. Yes. And so you don't even know sometimes somebody's walking around and they don't know there's conflict in their midst. They don't know they said the wrong thing one day. Um, it wasn't intentional. Right. To have maybe even something as small as not saying hello or maybe forgetting that it was somebody's special day or something because they had all this other stuff happening in their life, right? We're all walking around with all this stuff. Yes. And so so the person who avoids conflict is holding on to that man. And then eventually it bubbles up, and someday, like a year or two later, it might even come out, and they're going, what did I do? I didn't mention your, your purple shirt, you know, or whatever yes. it is. And, and, and so to be able to identify that is a really special skill. Yeah. Well, it's just so important because think about it. You're in a meeting. You're working on a project. Everybody's stressed. We're working long hours. And then you have people in the room who are not really saying what they really want to say, and they're offended. And then your your project goes, you know, it's not going well. Uh, There's there's so many things that it looks different because if I don't tell you how I'm feeling or I don't share with you that you offended me, then the person, me – Who's I've I've got some feelings too because you're treating me differently and things aren't going well. Yeah, you can so, kind of feel yeah, it. Yeah, you can mm-hmm. feel it. So mm-hmm. so then it's it's this thing of I will continue to behave the way that I'm behaving if I don't know it's offending you. Right. And it gets bigger until, like you said, it blows up. So accountability in that situation, I, I always say accountability is caring. When you tell me, Susan, that I said something to offend you. Mm-hmm. You, you are caring for me. You cared enough to tell me. Please yes. care enough for me to tell me because I don't want to do that to you. And I right. think most people in these work environments under stressful situations, they don't mean to come across that way. Or, right, right. But nobody tells them. Mm-hmm. And so they continue, and, and those relationships get broken or the project doesn't go well. Just think if we just cared enough to say, you know what? I'm going to do it in the right way because there is a right way to hold someone accountable. Sure, sure there is. And just so many things that are left unsaid and yes. and often just I think things are most healthy when you can put whatever it is out on the table. Yes. And really go back and forth, right, like a healthy debate or whatever. Yes. There's, a, there's a way to go about that. 
and really get down to the bottom of an issue too because if we all just go lockstep together we're missing pieces yes we are you know? um, my mother used to say you'd make a good lawyer because <laughs> i do love a good debate yeah right? me too <laughs> challenge me on it right because i, I want to hear it. but that's how we learn because we don't all have the same ideas and we're uniquely made so let me hear the difference and maybe i'll change my mind but if i don't i think we can agree to disagree in a yeah. very professional way and that's part of what's happening in our world today i don't it's hard to agree or disagree or you know yes. we need to have these conversations they're just really conversations and respect and understanding and there's another uh, quality that i didn't mention but is really important is kindness i mm-hmm. think that is the superpower that we all can exercise it cost us little to nothing to say hello like you said to open the door to listen to someone that's kindness just sitting here, thank you for this opportunity. You know, really, <laughs> just to, to, to be heard sometimes. Yeah, it, it's, it's interesting. There was a time as we both come up through the business community yeah. where we just didn't talk about things like kindness, no. right? Compassion, empathy, listening, caring. Yes. And so those were all things that were elements happening in the world around us, but everything was more on that task side and, and like business models and so forth. And today, the workforce really is focused on that. Yes. You know, and I think it's so much more than, you know, here in our region and probably all over the place you've seen over the last few years, those signs in yards that say, uh, be kind, I be think, kind. or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, yes, but, but, but really be kind. I don't, I don't want just a sign. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. actions please right like yeah. really be kind and what does that mean and I think it is all those little things like what do you do when nobody's watching yes integrity yeah absolutely yeah what are what are you doing then um and and you know how are how are all of those interactions and then we are human so we fail yes and we have our moments yes and so it's being open to that feedback right of yes. of um hey Susan um you weren't you weren't so nice that day and you you say that that's that's part of who you are. And then when you, you pull back the onion, you realize that was this, this moment you were under a lot of stress with a project or your boss or something. Yes. And in that exact moment, you may have not shown up the way you wanted to. And that is because we're human. Yes. And the kindness in that is yep. giving me the opportunity yes. by coming to me and sharing that. Yes. That's the accountability piece. Yeah. So as we talk about these soft skills, mm-hmm. right? They weren't mm-hmm. very popular before. Um, they're very popular now, but are they really being implemented? So I think you do have to have measurements. So I'm so people think if you are a soft skills person that you don't care about the numbers or the whatever. Right. It's not that I don't care about uh-huh. the numbers. Uh-huh. The numbers are very important because numbers tell a story. They have their own story. Mm-hmm. They tell whether or not those things that I'm doing are really being effective. I like to say numbers don't lie. They don't lie, do they? Mm -mm. So we need them. So there's got to be this uh, marriage of these things. You know, you got to have the soft skills to make these things happen, to progress, and hopefully to bring it to a higher level. But you need to measure, inspect what you expect. Ah, uh, yeah, got to do it. Wasn't that? Uh, I don't know if he was in your class. Uh, Ted Hunt said that he did. Uh-huh. No, he was not in my class. So, <laughs> Ted, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to he used to do this uh, um, PowerPoint every year that he would update, and he would tell the class when he updated it <laughs> every year, and he'd make it a little better. But he would always say that one, and oh, we'd yeah. all listen. Such yeah. a great leader, um, you know, here in our community. When I think of him. Um, he was a leader early on in my career that um, believed in me and so poured into me, like mentored and supported and pushed, you know. Wow. And so as I think about that, um, one of the, the questions that I, I had for you is what is a characteristic that you think every leader should possess? Wow, that's a big one. Um, I think it is the ability to listen. Yeah. I was not good at that for many, many years because I was always thinking about what I was going to say. What you're going to say. Right. Or what people thought of me and all this other stuff that I just had to get out of my head and and really just, you know, or what I needed to do next. Right. right? The to-do list. We're human beings. We have these great minds and we can do all these things at one time. But the reality is for people, multitasking, um, 
kind of takes away from listening. So active listening and being able to really connect with the person is a totally different thing. If you want your organization to grow, if you want your teams to be successful, if you want to, in your marriage, I mean, I'm going to be married 29 years this year, Susan. Can you believe it? And Me too. <laughs> you? Me too. We have so next much in year's, common. Yeah, next year's Susan's 1993, 29. right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Wow. Didn't uh-huh. know that. But, uh-huh. um, you, but, but you, you know, in your marriage, you really have to listen. And um, I just think that's so, so important. And, and when, you, you know, you use the term active listening, um, so something for, if, if this is new, if you're listeners and um, you haven't really given this a lot of thought, um, it's being fully present with someone uh, when they're sharing something with you. Now, this is everything. So, so this is adding active listening to all parts of your life. And I find it most effective with a couple of things. Um, the people that annoy you. And that might be people around work. Okay, we'll just say it. But that can be family too. And so you tend to tune them out. And um, if, if there's somebody you've made your mind up about when they come to you for something, you're, you're already not listening. And there is value there. That's right. Right? There's value in Absolutely. everyone. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And so by, by honing those skills and being really present, like like stopping that 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 running list in the head yeah, and all the things we have to do in our day and, and you know, maybe these shoes hurt. Yes. And, you know, all the other stuff that's running through your head and just going, I, I value this human being in front yeah. of me. I'm, I need to be present for them and listen. But that's a tall order. It really is. And, um, you know, one of the things at the hospital, Spotsylvania Regional, we get training you know, about active listening. Mm-hmm. Rounding is something that's really important. You know, you round on your patients and you can make sure they're doing all right, but also rounding on employees and okay. making sure they're doing all right. So you're trying to grow a team, you're trying to get something done. But if you're not listening or you don't know that person outside of that, um, if I'm just on a team or if I'm just working somewhere and the only time you talk to me is when you need something. Yes. Oh, do you feel valued? Absolutely not. That is the worst of the worst. So, um, you know, active listening is just something that I still work on today um, and find myself like I do it really well sometimes. And other times it's like, what in the world? How did I get over here driving home and you don't know how you got home? Because you're not really, you're just, right? right? You're just kind of doing the same thing. Right. We do that with people in we conversations. Do. We do. And it's like an hour later and you're like, I don't know what that meeting was about. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And, and and it's that task list. And yeah. it's, it's this 24 hour a day um, cycle of news and yes. social media and things around us that we have to also be intentional about how we're going to let that enter. Right, right? Our, influence our us, absolutely. Yes. So when we started out in our careers, it wasn't 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Oh, no. Um, it wasn't. And what I mean by that, you know, but, but, but for some folks listening, um, they don't know a world where you weren't attached to a phone, that a phone that had all your contacts in it, your email, your social, your apps, your the world at your fingertips, really. Yes. Um, it, you had... You left at five if it was a nine to five job kind of job, eight to five when I came to work here. Um, and it was like on Friday, it was done till Monday. That's right. It, it really was. So whatever the day off was, like when you were out there, you might have an occasional call or something work called in because something somebody's called out or something's happened and they need you. Um, but that wasn't that wasn't even intrusive because it was it wasn't it no. wasn't the norm. But it is today. And the, yes. the problem with it is that we are saying, you know, we want our employees to be healthy. We want our families to be healthy. But yet, we don't know how to shut ourselves off. Right. So one of the biggest things I think that we can do is first take care of ourselves. We need to implement self-care and leaders go first. So if you're a leader somewhere and you are emailing someone at 11 o'clock at night yeah. and it really isn't that important, like it could be taken care of in the morning during business hours, quote unquote, right? Whatever those might be for, for you, then wait, type it up if you need to, save a draft and send it the next day. Because what happens is 
we are trying to be in tune because we want to be great employees and colleagues and and we want to climb the ladder, right? Nobody goes to work and says, I want to be get fired today. I want to be miserable, <laughs> right. right? Nobody does that. No. So we, we go with these great intentions. And I think, you know, leaders all have great intentions. But what happens is we've got, all of us have gotten caught up in this because it's a convenience. So it's not only a convenience to get things done, but it's also a convenience to get things out of our head. And we start doing that. So, oh, I got all these things to do tomorrow. Let me just, let me email Susan this. Let me text her this. And, and, and you can reach them by text, email, and we're doing it all these different ways. I'm guilty of it. And I I'm still working it. through. <laughs> it's too much. It's like, it's <laughs> like you got people on LinkedIn, people, yes. you know, all, all the different pieces. And then there's new ones being created every day, you, you know, on, yeah. on how, how folks want to communicate. And so it, when you get back to like, I think I'll make a phone call. When you're talking to like Gen Z, they're like, I'm, what? Not, I'm not making a call. No. And I mean, I've, I've worked where they, they've said no, they just won't do it. Yes. It, right. It's so un- uncomfortable. Right. So it's having those conversations, too, yeah. of, of saying, what are we comfortable with? Like, I'm not comfortable communicating like important information in text that are it's work related. Right. I don't mean I'm going to be late. I'm going to be. I'm like like full, no no don't send me those documents. Exactly. In text, right. But somebody right. else that's the way they they communicate. So that's all they know. It all and and for you being in marketing and communications, I know you know all about this. Oh yes. Yeah. So we <laughs> like to communicate in all kinds of ways. Yeah. And, and social media is very important. It has great value sure. when it's used correctly. And and so. It's, it's that type of thing. Yeah. Because, um, of course, we want people to hear the good news, the good news of things happening in the hospital where you right. know, we're doing great work. Um, but I get it. There's a lot out there. Well, and we were just talking about kindness, and um, that's one of the things that, that, that hurts with social media. I mean, we are grown, and yet we still have stuff ourselves, I'm sure, that we either read or see or absorb because it comes through our feeds you know, I, I want to fill my feed with prettiness. Yes. Things that bring me joy, things that, that educate me, people I've met, people I know, people I love. And then there's things that seep in. Like it, it can be, a, it can be a, a, a site that I may follow for some fashion thing I like or something. And then down in some comments, people are bashing somebody for the outfit or something. Exactly. It, it's just unbelievable. Well, and they, I don't think they realize how much stress that can bring yes. to someone. So in coaching, um, I often talk to people about social media as far as they're, like, stressed or, yes. um, you know, trying to make a change in something. And so it's like, well, how much time do you spend on your, your phone? And, and, you know, what are you following? What are you listening to? And what are you aspiring to be? And it's usually in conflict, right? Ah, uh, I love that. Yeah. There's a conflict there because you're saying you want to be all of this and have this over here, but you're doing this. And, and it's like this unconscious thing that happens to us that we, we allow this to happen and we have right. these thoughts. Well, no wonder you're not sleeping. You're on your phone until you go to bed at 12 yeah. at night and yeah. you're looking at all of these other things. And it's you're, really coming at you. It's coming at you. Yeah, you're seeing what this person says and you're so frustrated about that yeah. before you go to bed. So your mind is not at peace. So it's, it's, it's that. And um, for anybody who does this, I keep telling my, I have two adult children, yeah. um, like, do not sleep with your phone. Get it out of your bedroom. You know, yes. this whole thing. I mean, my daughter has hers right there. Like no. something's going to happen, some emergency. Ah, we didn't have that. So I guess I can be comfortable in that. Maybe for them, I, you know, I'm trying to understand. A, le- a level of too much connection for too me. Too much connection. I mean, because yeah. the thing is beeping and ringing and dinging all night. I definitely silence it if, yeah. if, it's, on the, if it's on the charger in the room. But I've, I've really had to be, to our point of intentional, around yes. those pieces. Yes. I love my, my freaking iPad, man. I love <laughs> I do t- floating I around. Do t- you know, I yes. love looking at... Um, dream gardens on Instagram and, <laughs> you know, uh, all those things. But the other stuff, no matter what, creeps, creeps into it. that. Yeah, because you're going to have a pop-up ad. You're going to yep. have this. Mm-hmm. Somebody's going to see that you're on. Yep, right. They know when you're on sometimes, and they'll send you a message like, oh, Susan's I know. Up. I try to turn all those things off, but then they, they trick you. Like you do a, um, what is it, when you 
what are they called? Update, <laughs> phone update or <laughs> yes. whatever. Yes. Every time, then they change it. Like up, up. No, nope, yes. you might have said it that way, but it's wide open again. I know somebody's listening to this laughing at us. <laughs> I know, I know. But it's, I'm it's truth. It really yeah. is truth, mm-hmm. though. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's so what do you really mm-hmm. want? So if you say you want this, what are those things that are in conflict right. with what you want? Because really, um, when we take a deeper dive, often there are unintentional things that right. I'm doing that I'm not even conscious of that are going against what I really want. Mm. Uh, and sometimes you have to be that person who's on, right? You do, there, there are times. Um, so I'm just quickly work-life balance. I know you didn't ask me anything about it, no, but it kind of leads, kinda leads right me. into yes. that. You know, work-life balance isn't this perfect pie and every slice is the right. same. It's based on the season you're in. Yep what you're willing to do and, and not do, um, you know, your history, all of that. So so it's sometimes my work is a big slice of pie. And I tell be, my yeah. family and I communicate, hey, during this time, we've got this going on and this is going to be really big. But if that is my life always, I run out of energy. I can't maintain it. Something has to change. Something has to go. And I think that's where people kind of get thrown off. It's like, but I want this nice pie. And I only want to give work this much, or I only want to give my family this much, or, or they're in conflict with what they're saying and really what they're doing. So, that's a real big piece with coaching. Um, yeah. um, when I I had an executive coach a few years ago, and the first thing, um, one of the exercises that she gave me was that wheel yes. of life, right? Yes. And so you had to shade it out on kind of where you were from zero to a hundred in these different sections. The one that was missing on mine was was fun, friends, entertainment, all of that. And, and I, it was right there, like in front of me. It was like yeah. you were doing all this stuff, but um, when did you stop having fun? Well, and I even wonder if you were saying things all the time like, I wish I could go here yeah. or I'd never have time to do this. We say those things and we don't even realize that maybe we are in our own way. We are. Yeah. Yeah. I've been in my way quite a yeah. bit. I've blamed it on other people, situations. Uh-huh. And guess what? If I sat down and looked at it, it's like, wait a minute. I can, I can make that change. I really have the authority within me to do that. And I can do it in a positive way and still maintain high standards for work excellence and being there for my family, whatever those goals are that I'm trying to reach. Yeah. So so I'll tell you what I did. Yes. Um, to, to change that, and then we'll have to start to wrap up if you can believe it. Um, so I love the beach, yes. and I was lacking in solid, like, friends at that moment. I had a lot of people I was friendly with, but, like, all of that. So I reached out to some ladies that I was a little bit closer to and said, um, I want to get a beach house or something. Who would be interested in talking about that and going? And it was eight of us, and I thought maybe half might. They all said yes, and now we're going into our fourth or fifth year of going in November to the OBX. That's wonderful. Yeah, back to the same house yes. every time. And, uh, you know, the first year, um, some of them were like, what's the agenda? I was like, there's no agenda. Yeah. And, and these are all business people. You know, I know them all through work and everything, like different acquaintances with different projects and things. And everybody was like, really? They're, we're just going to, like, be? Like, we're just going to kind of cook? and drink a little bit of um, orange juice and <laughs> and eat and talk and walk on the beach and be and support each other and talk about life stuff. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. And now we do that. And each year we stay, everybody stays a little bit longer and the, the, the bonds are a little bit stronger yeah. and it's like a value. It is. It's a value. Oh, that, and that yeah. is so wonderful. Yeah. You know, to even... I mean, sometimes we identify these things and we don't take action, but you did in a big way. So um, hopefully somebody listening today um, will take up on that. What a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Do it with whatever it it is in your life. Yes. So so I was lucky that they said they said yes. Now, I can tell you, it is hard to find a beach house um, for that number of people (laughs) 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 that that fits because we all want our own room and everything, right? So to get the exact right one. But yeah. we've done it. And I'm not telling you where it is because you'll come and take our house. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's really great. And um, yeah. I, I definitely recommend finding that joy in everybody's life. 
So as we wind down, I want to ask you if you have a favorite motto or saying that you'd like to share. Of course. I have three. Yes, please. Okay, can please you indulge do. me for three? Yep. Okay, so let's see. Um, one is, oh, I love Maya Angelou. Yes. And so I quote her often. So, um, you know, it's this thing of people may not remember what you said or did, but they will always remember how you made them feel. And Susan's over here mouthing it, so she knows this one very well. I love it. So that's a good one. And then the other one is life starts at the end of your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. So if you're missing something and you want to get, what are you uncomfortable with? And look at that and see. So life starts at the end of your comfort zone. And the last one is a John Maxwell coach. I have to say this. Leaders go first. Okay. It's not always the, the fun thing, but leaders go first. And what I mean by that is be the example yeah. that you want to see. That's really it. So those are my three favorite. I couldn't come up with just one, Susan. Well, that's all right. When we, when we end here, we're going to go back. I'm going to show you my Maya quote that's on my yes. desk. Yes, good. Yeah. Love it. I love it. Yes. Anything else you want to share with our listeners? I just want to thank you, the Chamber, and what you do in the area. And, um, you know, I get to do what I love at Spotsylvania yes. Regional, and that is just so wonderful. It's taken me a long time, but during my careers, um, I feel like I've always done something that I love. And a mentor has been there somewhere along the way or a coach. So I just want to leave with people, don't do this alone. We all need somebody. We didn't get here on our own. And so um, hopefully you have a mentor or someone in your life who is helping you along the way that you can be authentic um, and and really share your feelings and thoughts and and dreams with can help you get to where you need to go. And if they don't, wouldn't, would you say just go ahead and ask someone? Yes, absolutely. And usually it's someone already in your circle. Yeah. You won't have to go too far. Yeah. 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 I love it. Well, yeah. Susan, it's been a joy sitting here and um, having this conversation with you today. Thank you. Um, yeah. I look forward to many more in the future. Yes. Um, these two 29-year married Susans in the Fredericksburg region. <laughs> I know. And you know what? I think we're the exact same age, but we're not going to tell them what that yeah, is. Yeah, we're both. Yeah. Um, something. Something. Uh, Just 30. <laughs> something. So, it doesn't match. Right. <laughs> It's all good. It's all good. It is. Yeah. So um, again, this is I'm Susan Spears with the Fredericksburg Regional Chamber. This is the Leader to Leader podcast. Our guest today has been Susan Coleman, the Director of Marketing and Communications at the Spotsylvania Regional Medical Center here in Fredericksburg, Virginia. If you have not already subscribed to the Chamber's We Are Business podcast, can you go ahead and do so? Then you'll know when new episodes are avail- available. I thank you so much, and we look forward to seeing you next time.